Hey everybody, it's Brian. Uh, if you are uh, listening and not watching this, I'm sitting inside a rental car right now um, in Moscow, Idaho at the University of Idaho campus. We are here for the one year mark uh, of the awful murders here at the University of Idaho. Kaylee Gonzalez, Maddie Mogan, uh, Zana Cronodal and Ethan Chapin all killed here one year ago. Uh, it's, it's weird, it doesn't really feel like a year, at least for me covering it. I know it doesn't feel like a year for a lot of the people in the community that I've been talking to. You know, I think because of this sort of ongoing legal process, um, it's hard for people to move on without there uh, being a trial yet. There's not even another court date uh, status uh, hearing set at this point, depending on when you're watching this video. So that's frustrating for the people in the community. It's, it's frustrating for the families. There's a candlelight vigil happening here uh, in town. We were just over at Mad Greek where the restaurant where Zan and Maddie worked, they had a um, memorial outside there for them. So it's obviously just a, a somber day here in Idaho. Um, I, I interviewed Kaylee Gonzalez's parents. It's probably been about a week and a half now, kind of about what this year mark meant for them, how they're doing. It, the interview was more than an hour and we've played a couple of clips so far on News Nation, but I wanted it um, in this podcast episode to play for you the full interview. Sometimes when you just see clips or shortened version, you don't get the feel of what someone's going through. Um, and I just, I think seeing the full hour plus interview, you really get a sense of number one, how they're doing, this sort of hell that they're living, how ongoing it is, um, and also just like what amazing people they are. I was just talking to Lauren, my producer, who's sitting next to me, um, just about with these tragedies that I've covered recently, I've met some amazing families that are really inspiring um, in many ways. And the, the Gonzalveses, I feel that way about just the relationship that Christy and Steve have and the support that the family has and that they show each other in, in such a difficult time. Same with Ethan Chapin's parents. Um, Ethan's mom, Stacy Chapin, is, is really just like an amazing person and the relationship that she has with her husband despite everything they've been through with this, uh, I find very inspiring. And even back to Gabby Petito and the, um, you know, the relationship that her parents have and her step uh, parents have and they all are like one big family unit. It, it's inspiring to see the way people come together. So I hope that that can come through by showing the full unedited interview and uh, I just think it, it gives people a sense of what it is really like for these families right now so um, uh, I will uh, talk a little more after the interview but take a look some days it's just absolutely so real you cannot even run and hide from it and other days I could just put myself and you know I could go about my day and all then, the girls are asking then, for this and that they're you know, and I, I'm back attention. to work, and my work people are amazing, and um, and then I come home, and I'm just like, you know. Yeah, that's why you don't like driving the vehicle because it always. I hate driving. Brings it. I hate because the to car you. to me is just dreadful. It's like a prison cell. Oh my. You guys did a lot more with the vehicle too. You guys went and. You guys were the ones who went and purchased it. So for me, it was it's just the memory of her. Oh, her car. Yeah. Yes. I, yes. I, it's so hard for me to look out. The, and it's out there every day. But it is so hard for me to look out there and see Kaylee's Range Rover. Even though it was such a short time that she had it. And I say that. I'm like, it's so weird. But it was so Kaylee's car already. She had had a Subaru Legacy for years. Yep. It was a newer one. Yep. And that, to me you would think would, you know, you, you, you see them around a lot, you know, it's a pretty common car that would, you know, get me in, and, and, but it's not, it's that dang Range Rover, man. And yeah, I'll just look out the, I'll go out there on the back porch and I just sit there and I'm just like, <laughs> you know, because it just is such a, you know, we just, it was just such a happy moment days before, I mean, hours Literally, I mean, 96 hours before this happened, you would never think when we're sitting there running around Spokane, looking at cars that in three days, she bought that on the 10th and not even three days. Cause obviously it was, you know, the early morning hours of that Sunday, mm -hmm. but two days later she'd be gone and Maddie. 
and to others. It's just, it's, it is insane. I don't know if it, I don't know if I'll ever snap out of it. I don't know if I keep doing what I'm doing. I don't know if I go get myself in therapy because I'm a total basket case. I don't know. You know, You're always going to be a basket case. I, I will you probably started, always be You started the equation. <laughs> You know, and people always say, oh, you're doing, you know, they, they ask you, how are you doing? You know, and your natural reaction is just to say, good, good, you know, good for, for what we, you know, good. But the, but the answer is not good, not good at all. I mean, how can you be, Yeah. you know, I would be good if, you know, that was my dog, you know, I'd still, you know. Be okay if it was my you know but this is my child and her best friend yeah it's and not even like a, a and, broken uh, marriage where they live separately and yeah they're, they're still they're still they find other people get happy you, you just don't recover from something like this there is no there is and no. unfortunately you're left with your own thoughts and i think that that i that with me is pretty pretty bad um because your those thoughts just they just don't stop sometimes you know and you just go down the rabbit hole and you're just like okay if that is what happened then this happened and then this and and then you're just like oh my gosh get out of there quick shut the door you know like get out of that room that room is yeah it's yeah bad so you won't go in that car that's you don't it doesn't i will bring, yeah. i will and but I mean, if we I have a choice, it's always something oh, else. Oh, yeah. Maybe. And I mean, I have a tiny car. I have a little car. And, um, you know, obviously that's roomier and stuff. But I'm like, oh, no. You know, well, I'll take my dogs and we'll get in my car. And, I mean, he, you know, takes up my whole car pretty much. And I'm like, oh, well, it's okay. Just make some room. Yeah. Scoot, scoot. <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just very heartbreaking. And I'm looking at it, riding in it. Yeah, I thought that I would drive it. I thought that we would probably switch. I'm like, well, probably. Because we didn't get it back for a long time. And that car hit me like hard. Six, seven months. When we got that got that car back. Yeah, I remember the pictures of you. There yeah. were some pictures of you when you went and got it. And it was like, wouldn't, you know. They pulled a chip out of it. And it took them, it was a little bit more complicated to get it all working and running again. It was uh, definitely... Yeah, getting that car back because she had just put stuff in it and I was talking to her as she was like packing it up and she didn't, I mean, she unloaded some of it back at that house, but it mostly was all in there exactly and it had just sit in like a time capsule for, you know, six, seven months, you know, that this all happened and like her purse was in the back. She backed seat. up to that, that door right there and just put a bunch of stuff in the back. So, and you know, it was still there because I think Murphy's she... crate. She was in there. Class on Monday and that was it? Was I guess she was going to take some finals on Monday and she was going to be back on Tuesday. Yeah, I believe so. So she's just going to throw some of that stuff from her room into her car, come back. I mean, you guys live this every day, but does like the year mark mean anything? Does it feel any different or is it just similar to how you feel every day? It has symbolism because it's a, it's a close of a chapter and it, it means a full year. It does. Every holiday has it, been. She's been gone. The, she's missed everybody's birthday. Yeah. We've missed hers. We've missed every holiday. Um, her sisters don't want to be as old as her. No. That's something um, that is, is really hard. That, you know, Autumn said, what am I going to do when I'm older than my older sister? And I was like, what do you mean, you know? And then I thought about it and I was like, oh. And I told Olivia, who obviously is older, so that will never happen, um, to Olivia. And she was like, yeah, I could see that, you know, being something for Autumn. And, yeah. um, you know, you just don't understand, you know, it's, it's hard to get in everybody's head, you know, and how everybody is... Um, dealing with this, you know, as much as, you know, we still have young kids at home, Autumn and Aubrey, um, you know, they're still um, young adults and you can't just drag them into a counseling or therapy when they're like, no, 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 you know, 
And uh, no matter how bad you think they need it or not, I mean, you just, you can't, you know, when they're like, I'm not going. Um, so I think we just kind of have been trying to deal with things on our own. Um, and like I said, I don't know if, I don't know if we're doing good or bad, really. Um, I mean, I'm not to say that all we do is sit around and cry. I mean, people ask me and sometimes, and I said, uh, well, here's the thing. I mean, if I could lay down and die, I probably would, but you can't. I mean, you physically, mentally, emotionally, you can't, <laughs> you know, I probably would have tried. Um, you got to get up no matter how you think I'm never getting out of this bed ever. You know, I'm not taking a shower. I'm going to stop eating. You, you've, you've got to. And I don't know if it's because of the other kids and the grandkids, my own will to live my own, my own husband. Um, but we're human, you know, and, um, as a human, your instinct is to live and that's how you got to do. I mean, whether, you know, how painful it, it, it is or, you know, you just try to put on the happy face and be happy and not make people cry because you don't want to be the Debbie Downer in the room either. Everybody knows wherever you go. Oh, you know, look who just, oh. Is that weird? Yeah, you're like the dark cloud. I mean, you know, but I mean, I wear something like this, you know. Yeah. I mean, I can't expect people to not know who I am. We do interviews, you know, we've gone publicly, um, you know, so I, I don't want to be like, oh my, you know, I would never tell somebody to go away or leave me alone. Or my kids have been like, well, that's weird. Like I would be like, I would never do that to somebody, you know, come up to them in public. And I'm like, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm not like everybody, me, you know, or anything like that. But, um, I, I, you know, if you, you recognize me out in public and you come up to me and say, Hey, as a mother, you know, I don't, you know, I, it, it, it helps me. It makes me feel good. You know, it does help I, I, as school. weird as it sounds, yeah. you know? Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't get bothered by that, but the kids will be like, Oh my gosh, well, that was just really weird. I mean, we were literally in target and that lady just came from nowhere and I'm just like, you know, well, I think people like around the world feel like they know Kaylee, even yeah. though they didn't really yeah. know her, but they just like saw something in her personality, feel inspired by yeah. her now. Which is kind of interesting that like she's so well known everywhere mm -hmm. after yep. she's gone. Yeah, yeah. If they would, they would. Just... I was waiting for people to get to know her. I I knew she was going to be a a world shaker. I, I always knew. I was like, the not way like that, this, but yeah, yeah. But she was such a hustler, and she never got. She got along with everyone, and I mean, even when when this happened, uh, yeah. vice president of the company. He showed a text from her manager and, and he sent to the manager, who is this Kaylee girl? I keep hearing about her. I keep mm -hmm. hearing about her and she did some work for them. So I knew she was, she was in the right place at the right time to make things happen. So, you know, it, that's why it was such a, such a bad thing that, to try to get your head through and get your head around. And all these kids had so much potential and they were doing everything the right thing, you know. They were doing everything the way you're supposed to go to school. It's just crazy how one everything. person can come in and cause so much trauma, so much damage. One miserable person. You know. Goes after all the people that are. And then, you know, we got to go through hoops and loops and jumps to get them. I guess he's just convicted get, to get them officially. I don't know where we're Get doing a schedule right now. right now is what we're really hoping for is a schedule. We were get hoping the there'd be a schedule before the year. I don't know. I just um Yeah, even being in court today, like it just seems like such a slow process. It's just, it is agonizing. It's like they're discovering it as they go because there's new technologies and there's new evidence in the gathering of the evidence is a different technique than, you know, these people read in a book. This stuff's not even in books yet. Yeah. So the, the So have you just kind of accepted like that it's gonna be a while? I, I refuse. I mean, I'm still waiting for like a Hail Mary or a miracle or something and be like, it's, you know, it, it's not going to, you know, I realize it's going to be 2024, but I refuse to think it's going to be, it's going to be pushed any further out than that. I just, I absolutely refuse to let myself think that. 
but all these big delays and you know you you get like so close like that september date that that got pushed back to october two days before i took everything out of me i was down i mean i was literally down i was sick i felt like uh, i felt like i was gonna vomit um i just i put so much into these these court dates as little as they are you know i'm i'm waiting i'm i'm, I'm waiting for him to change his plea i'm waiting for him them to say mm, you know i don't know why i don't know why i just think to myself and then i i, I like want to pray it away and and pray that he makes the right decision and and he says I'm, I'm done i'm not doing this anymore you know i get it like it's just it's costing so much not i mean the lives have already been taken but what he's doing to the families and I don't know. I don't know what goes on. And, and not having control of your life is just the worst thing ever. Yeah. It's the worst. I mean, for the most part, every, people, you know, that are in control of their lives has somewhat control. I mean, there's always something that, you know, is not in your control usually. But I mean, as parents and adults, you know, we've always been fairly in control of our own lives. So you mean the court process feels very out of control? Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, it's terrible. You get a stack up your vacation time because the speedy trial, we weren't sure. So, you know, I stacked oh, up close. my vacation. We got close. We thought that might have, there was got to be a little bit of a chance. I didn't think there was, but she was hoping for it. I was hoping. I was, I was like, no, no, no. I think we're going to, I mean, when they scheduled those dates, I was like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And Shannon's like, it ain't going to happen. Well, I was just thinking today with everything they were talking about, how could they have ever done it? Like there was yeah, so much. It, it would have it would have been in some some would argue in benefit could have been because those those FBI agents in there working today is, is more evidence. And and I get yeah. that and I have a good friend or a good friend, my cousin, family member, and he tells me, you know, he knows a lot about the legal system and whatnot. And he tells me, Christy, it's actually a good thing. Because it just gives them more time. They're not just going to sit there and do nothing. They're going to continue to investigate. Things are going to continue to fall in their laps. Tips are going to continue to come in. It's And I'm just like, I don't want to hear that. Like, I want to see this guy die. Like, I don't want him breathing any longer. Because they say, oh, he's living in hell already. No, he's not. Not the hell that I think of. The hell that I think of is agonized, literally terrifying agonizing torture day in and day out i don't care latah county jail is not agonizing that is not hell no what what's it like i've wondered when i've seen you guys like what is it like being in the courtroom because i think everybody feels strange in there because it's such a small space yes yeah, it's it's, so it's, small. it's it's not as big as the case it's so puny it's so small it's so it's hard to realize like something this big and you're in this little goofy courtroom that seems like it's a prop almost like a prop in a in a small movie yeah, or something like it's so one of those diagrams and they're looking from out above and you're flicking people off and driving a little car yeah yeah so it is the worst part, obviously, is being in the same room with him. Mm -hmm. And to sit here and look at this, I don't know what he is, to look at this thing and, and know what he has done. And, I mean, like I said, you could make your own details up. And, and like you mentioned earlier, like you usually go into court and trial and shit starts getting, starts getting dropped. And you start being like, oh, my. you know, I know yeah, it's going to happen. Like so I cannot even imagine. I cannot even imagine what we're going to hear. And I mean, that is none of what I'm looking forward to, you know, wanting this to happen. And this, I don't know. I don't know if he's ever going to speak. It makes me sick that he sits there in his suit, suits. Yeah. And he sits there and taps his hands and... And you're just sitting there and he, you know, sits there and rocks back and forth in the chair. And I'm thinking, why is he sitting in a big old judge chair? Put him in a chair, you know. I don't know why he's sitting in such a big comfortable chair and all dressed up in a fresh haircut. And I've never, we, I've, I've looked it up, never seen another murderer or whatever he is convicted. convicted. Um, 
up to this uh, this point Charged. of the case, <clears throat> not in handcuffs, not in shackles, one or the other, or both, and in orange. I don't understand why he's sitting there. Pre pre trial. Uh, pre trial, yeah. yeah. Yeah, usually it's just during, like, with the jury there. Yeah, because exactly. that's where they're biased. That's, that's where, where they could be know, formed a bias. And I'll tell you what. I do feel differently about the way he... It is, there is. Because, I mean, there is a different light that that I feel shed on me when I, you know, when I walk past the TV or something and his face will be on our screen or something. And when he's wearing orange versus, like, the original ones where he's in orange with his hair on the back of his neck... And him all cleaned up. Not that I think he's nice looking or anything by all means, but it's it's one's more, more like a business activity it's versus two different people. A criminal, and they're just giving you know. And I'm just like, okay. And they're afraid that we're gonna, you know, we're talking or saying something, and 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 gonna ruin the case. Or, but you guys are letting him portray look, himself. Yeah, portray himself like this upperclassman. And not bring him in wearing shackles and or at least a pair of shackles around his ankles, at least. Yeah, you don't want your somebody accused of killing your daughter being even getting peripheral treatment just because the case has got more attention. Than I don't normal. understand why. I don't understand why. Do you who made <clears throat> that call? Do you feel like? <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going. <clears throat> Do you feel like the um, the prosecution is? giving you enough information at this point <clears throat> we get no information at all we find it out ourselves and we, then we don't get uh, that sounds so yeah we don't get any they don't yeah we don't get any information like hey by the way i mean they did let us know by the way the fbi is going back in the house they're going to be in the house on tuesday and wednesday um or whatever which is good dude, because when that happens but, our phones will ring you know there's going to be people who reach out and say what's your comment and you're there has we, been times where we're like we're not even sure what you're talking about but no as but they've done as, a better job of making sure that we get as far as the heads things up. like oh like like during you know i thought maybe like they would tell like maybe over the summer like hey we just want to let you know that we you know we've kind of put together a little task force and this this uh the next two weeks we, we plan on getting out in the you know lolo mountains or whatever whatever and you know searching for the murder weapon or, no we don't get you know or you know hey we got no wait, you know and I understand a lot of that. I mean, I guess they, I mean, people say, yeah, that's crazy. They would never give that. I, I, I don't know because I've never been involved in a murder before like this, you know, obviously. So I don't know if it's crazy that we're asking for more information. You know, I don't know. But, but we know just as much as, as always, we know just as much as. The people. See, you know? it's funny because they won't say anything. And then when they find out that we know something, then they're like, uh, tell us about that. And I'm like, oh, we could have told you about this a long time ago. Right. If it was an open. Yeah, if there was a dialogue here. Well, why is it when you that know that, I, that, that, that we're on to something that's 100% that you've already verified, then you want to, now you want to cross notes. So You know, I don't, I mean, in hindsight, I, I, I don't know how who did what in the case i don't know how much the fbi did versus isp versus moscow i don't care kudos to all of them yeah yeah, all of them great job the investigators you know our local guy you know awesome pain Pain. love i mean great you know i you know it doesn't matter but now that it's in court and it's not in you know i mean they did their work and i i'm assuming they're they still go out there and I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine that that's all they do all day is just investigate the... the well, now it's kind of shifted to the courtroom, and then that's where yeah. it gets and really quiet. Where, yeah. I mean, obviously, they were quiet, too, They, but but they did, they, you know... I think the... They did solve it. The problem that we get more into is, like, if you're going to do something that... Like, t- t- taking, destroying the house, tearing, demo the house... That's something where I think the family should have been brought in and said, what is your guys' take on it? Because we all want to be one united front. Nobody wants to uh, hurt the case at any way, any shape. So um, there's a, I think there's a right time when you can say, hey, how can we make this a better transition, transaction? The city needs to recover from this. We have business that we have to get to. The, everything revolves around these schools. I get that. But when they just tell you, 
hey, we're going to do this. And then you say, well, we have questions and we want to know more information. And they're like, too bad. You're not going to get it, you know. And then you kind of forces you to fight. You know? Yeah. So then you're like, all right, well. And we've definitely come with plenty of questions. And some of them, I'm like, we're not going to get an answer to that. You know, yeah, we expect. Yeah. But then sometimes I'm like, they're not going to answer that? Like, why won't they answer that? You know? And, you know, and it goes through our attorney. Everything goes through, through Shannon, you know. And, it, it, yeah, I, I, I feel like sometimes prosecution, the prosecution uh, team worries more about the university and the university's agenda. Well, everybody seems to know each other. Mm -hmm. It's a small town. The university seems to be like the big business. Yeah, yeah. I think it's 4,000, 5,000. We get it. When they're not in school, but when they are, it's like 55. Yeah. So it really is like a extreme. And we, we understand that they just can't lose the college. You know, the we don't want that. just can't go away yeah. because, you know, they're putting all their time and effort and money. But I mean, but then, you know, maybe just not worry about fall recruitment for a year. You but know. they had the highest, uh, biggest freshman class ever. I was Did really, they? Yeah. Like I was just talking to someone about this at the courthouse um, that, I mean, they could, you know, not ignore what happened it almost would make more sense I think. it's more on the map now i mean there's more people i've seen like, a no lot one's of people gonna forget about it regardless of what and the doing. footage people are like it's beautiful there this small little town you mm -hmm. see it and there's a lot of people oh, yeah. are like okay well it is a bad thing that happened but look how they reacted yeah this is how you want a community to react they want they are offended they're pissed off and they're going about doing everything in their power to make sure that these kids are, you know, they're going to for get the form of justice that they deserve, where that's not the case all across America. You know, we have pockets of, of, of areas where they have that more, more killings in one weekend. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's not even on TV. So yeah. I think some people look at that and they're like, you know what, even though this tragedy happened, it wasn't a local, it was an outsider. There's not going to be outsiders that are all like that. It was just an extreme event from some some misfit, and uh, they'll probably never have an incident for decades to come. Right, and that's what we all hope for, you know. But with Ever, the anywhere. with the house, um, you know, you guys fought and fought really hard. I'm sure it was uncomfortable at times to have to yeah. come out and mm -hmm. you know speak out against yes. the university and the prosecution. I was like hiding under my bed the whole time. Yeah, him and Chan were out there, and I was you like, were, no, you guys were, go. you were fighting it. And I, I mm -hmm. could tell it was uncomfortable, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they kept saying, you know, but we don't need it anymore. Yeah. And then to see the FBI there again and all the boards taken off this week, it um, was really hard. Um, I knew in my heart. What was best for those girls and that and Ethan? I knew what was best was to keep that around until they did more. And uh, there'll be a point when I'll be like, you know what? Let it go. Let it go. And and our agenda of keeping it around isn't because, well, you know, oh, it's going to be so sad when it's torn down. I mean, that is going to be sad to me. And people think, how can that like? tear it down and it's just like look like my daughter lived a happy life there yes she was murdered there ultimately murdered but that was this much time you know she we have pictures of them in the house when that house goes it's gonna be hard i i i wouldn't i don't want to go in it i i've never even been to the house i've never drove by it i don't want to but it's still gonna be when they're like that house is gone it is going to be very emotional for me. and But that wasn't why the emotional side of things. It was strictly like, is this going to be, is this good for the prosecution? Is this good for the case? You know, and I, I like I said, we don't know any of this stuff. But, you know, reading, and they, they talk about how jury members walk through crime scenes and, and stuff like that. And I'm like... This is this is crazy. And why I, take know? the chance? I mean, why? just a couple. Why not just wait, a, even if it's a, a year or two? Yeah, and I mean, and he absolutely. He said there is no evidentiary value in that house at all. He said walls and flooring and and, and the acoustics are not the same. If um, anybody talks, aren't the yeah, same. Yeah, the acoustic bothered me, and I was like, well, this guy was here twelve times that we have documented. I'm taking you for your word for what you've said. If he's there twelve times, 
Where was he parking? And what could he see from those locations? Was he looking through windows and seeing these people? Those are all parts that would explain motivation. Was he there stalking? Was he obsessed with these, these individuals? So you can't tell me with the house being gone that you can give somebody the view of somebody parking right there, which is, you know, 200 feet away. You want to look in that window and say, oh, I can totally see somebody walking through there right now. Mm-hmm. I can see it's a red shirt that they got on. Mm-hmm. They got a bandana on. Those little details of where, oh, that's why he sat there for half an hour and then drove off, you know. So those were the things that I was, uh, I wasn't sure they had been captured. So now that they are, it, it'll and be less and less. the stuff they're doing now is the same stuff they did before and they're just doing it again or brand new stuff. I don't, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they did before. I don't know what they're doing now. They I do, do know that wondering. I feel like this time around it was, they were a little careless because people did snap some photos and I wasn't real happy. I mean, they're just, I mean... It, they, it, it was a photo of Maddie's room. Olivia sent it to me today, and I was like, whoa. It was a picture of Maddie's room, and the wall's cut out. Yeah, and they told us about that, and that, that's they're trying to protect us. We had it's, not seen any of that, uh, the cutout walls at all. It was nothing as bad as what we'd seen with the mattresses and other things, too. We've seen, we've seen some pretty bad stuff. I think they actually did a really good job getting the stuff out and uh, escaping the media for mm-hmm. the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, the police officers went in there I, with I the know U-Haul. when they removed the kids in the first place people always ask about that and I'm, they'll even ask us about it and stuff and I'm like ew why are you like don't ask me this you know and then I start thinking I'm like yeah I mean yeah they yeah they did that, that good I'm so glad they don't have pictures of that and I mean I, they tried with the mattresses I'm sure you saw those pictures but yeah. they tried Mm-hmm. You know, they were definitely like, get get out of the way and let's get out of here with these. But that was, the mattress just tore me up. But um, it just seems though, like, you know, I think some people were questioning like, oh, do you just kind of sit back and stay quiet through this process? Or do you kind of have to like fight for your you child? Have to, yeah. You have to. And yeah. it seems like, you know, you still have to be their voice. You do. And yeah, this the... kind of shows that. Yeah. Well, her... Olivia, Kaylee, you guys watched all those shows of like type of, you know, tragedies that had happened. And we've always wondered like why some cases that were the most interesting didn't get any cameras, no publicity, no nothing. You, they just fade off and you never know. Now we know why. And it's, it's, if, if, if you just ignore the cameras, you don't give the opportunity for the people to see the story. So that's, we don't want that to happen to these girls to where nobody knows what's really going on. I guess the more insight that they have, the more committed they are to make sure that they see this through. And the more people want to see it through, the more we can guarantee an outcome that is uh, fair and um, justified. This is going to cost a massive amount of money to Idaho. So let it be a beaconing for everyone to see when uh, somebody comes here and hurts our kids. This is We're fully committed. We're fully committed to those kids to make sure that they get the justice that... Uh, they deserve. Do you have any preference uh, if if the trial should stay in Latah County, or a lot of people think it should move? They're worried about, you know, too many people being familiar with the case. I don't. Um, I mean, I wanted to go to Boise just because that really puts a hardship on us, and we plan on being there. If we didn't plan on being there, I'd be like, I don't care, move it anywhere. You know, I I think he's done wherever you put this. I, I think you can go anywhere in the United States. And he'd be done. I think he's guilty, and I think evidence is evidence, regardless yeah. of the community that it's it gonna... might be circumstantial. But when it you got thirty little circumstantial points, it all I've never heard DNA something. is circumstantial ever. Okay, well, anyways, um, there's been some talk that it comes to Kootenai County, which is us, and I think that that would be fantastic because we've already talked about you know leaving our jobs, pulling our kids out of school. You know, for the duration of the trial, renting a house down there. I mean, we have small dogs, taking the dogs, and literally, I mean, we're not going to go back and forth every day. There's no way. You know? I guess so, people don't, I never really think about that, like what you said about having to take the vacation time and like yeah. having to really plan your whole life around all these hearings. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I'm up to the where I'm maxed, so I'm taking this vacation because I'm going to lose it. 
But I had to max myself up in case the speedy trial happened. So I haven't taken a vacation in two years. I've already, for my, for, for the year, I've already used all my sick time. I've already called in. I mean, yeah, I don't even have any sick time left. So, yeah. But it's okay. know, there's different responsibilities yeah. for us. Yeah. yeah. Just being in your house, there's so many pictures and stuff that people send you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and like everybody has, supports you guys. Does that help? Totally. Yeah. One hundred percent. I mean, I love when I'll just go into a food place here in town and somebody will tap me on the shoulder and say, Hey Steve. And a lot of people know me from football and coaching in the mm -hmm. community. She works at a school. I work at a hospital. So everybody, uh, definitely makes you feel like you picked the right place to live. And our page, we get mm -hmm. so much love on our, you know, our family page. It's, it's insane. Worldwide. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The comments, I mean, I could just read them forever and ever and ever and ever. I read them before I go to bed. I read them in the morning when I get up. I always have a little bit of quiet time before, you know, start moving around. And I read, open it up and read the comments. And <laughs> there is a lot of amazing people out there. People yeah. really feel connected to yes. you guys. Yeah. And we and I feel it, that it's, it's sincere. It's not mm -hmm. just, you know, I mean, people tell us they cry with us, that they share our grief. And, and they say, you know, I know we can never bear the burden, but we do. Like our family like has cried over this. We talk about this, we follow yeah, this. Yeah. This has affected us, you know? I yeah. mean, and, and not just one family, I mean, a lot, a lot mm -hmm. of people. Daily, daily, there's some family. There's always somebody. I mean, we get, we get cards still, letters. I mean, handwritten letters from, 92 year old women mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you know i'm a grandma of 30 kids and you know and this and that and just going on and and and, and, and i'm sorry it's taken me so long to write and i'm thinking oh my gosh are you kidding you know but I've, i finally just had to do it i just couldn't take it anymore and just yeah and it's super helpful too because uh having eyes and ears all across the world you they, they pick up things that you would not, you know, you never see a story. Um, we've gotten photos, videos from her friends that mm -hmm. she grew up with that we would never have seen those photos. We've never would have got those videos. So that in itself was worth uh, any uh, anything that we've gone through as far as somebody leaving a jerk comment or something like that. It yeah. doesn't bother me. But knowing that I'm going to get photos that I never would have got and uh, see people share you know, experiences and things that they did with our daughter. They're yeah. stories that we would have never known about. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to know everything you, about your daughter. You don't know them all. Down in college town, who she mm -hmm. knew, and people say, hey, I just want to let you know that one night we were at a party and I actually met Kaylee and she played beer pong with me or something, you know, and yeah. it's just like, thank you for that. You know, you could totally visualize it. You could totally picture it. it and pictures like, with it, you know. Well, you mentioned like going through her phone, like there was pictures and... Well... Um, I was going through uh, my my messages with her on my phone. On oh, your phone, yeah. Okay. Just and going we don't through have messages. Hers. Yeah, we're trying to get her. I phone. can't wait to get hers one day, someday. Some oh, people. that's all still in evidence, obviously. Some people got backups, but we we never got one. We there got was more complications it. with Kaylee's phone, so. But going through your old messages is. Yeah, I just did. I I haven't gone back and read through them, and over the weekend I started. <laughs> reading uh scrolling through and reading some of our messages i could have my phone out and caleb would just grab it and say dad we're taking photos yeah and any of the girls will do that and you literally so. be like oh my gosh will you stop taking photos and like is that all just, you do and then you send them to their and phone I mean, and she'd be like uh, you know and i'd be like oh my god you know i'd be like stop like don't get away you know like i i am i run different generation from the camera you know? yes and yeah and i'm like i'm so thankful like yeah. i yelled at her so many times be like put your phone away now and don't you snap another picture do you still i think you mentioned to me like did you or do you still text her phone i mean yeah you, i do yeah yeah she hasn't got it turned off so you pay the bill yeah 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 and, and I, we hope to get it back. We'll eventually should get it back. Is it comforting texting her? Yeah, it's usually when, you know, I don't, yeah. It just sucks because you just want her to reply so bad. So bad. And I go to our last message all the time, you know. And it's just crazy to me 
because I remember exactly where I was, what I was doing, what we were talking about. Me and Steven, Steven were out when she sent me that picture. And I would have never known that Kaylee would be dead in 12 hours from that picture. And Maddie, never. Both of them laughing their butts off. Yeah, most parents don't get, for better or worse, you're, we see the very last moments all the way. It's like, it was like a camera was following yeah. them around. Like, it was, yeah. That's why that I feel like so them. many people relate to two girls laughing, one waving her arm and they're talking about boys and they were over at a club and there's other boys there and they're going and getting grub fo- food and she's like, oh, don't worry, I'll share it with you. It just seemed like you're watching their lives as it was just part of your life and then you know what it ends you know how it ends and you're just like there's you know that he knew what he had planned his plan he was planning it out right then and there as they were eating he was planning on their murder right then and there i mean he was he was getting himself all hyped up all dressed Packing his little bag. And our children know. Sickening. Killing someone is just, it's, that's God's decision. He decides when people come and go. It's, it, it, you've got to be pretty, you, you've got to be careful when you decide that. I know it's somebody's job and uh, that's a different circumstance when they go to war or they're a police officer. But as our kids and they get mad and they say something, you know, dirty or ugly to their siblings, we're like, no, 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 no. You don't wish any of that on anyone because that's just not acceptable. You know, you got to apologize. I remember lining the kids up and making them apologize and them getting so mad at me for making them do stuff. I try to embarrass them, make them do it in public, in front of people. Make them kiss. Yeah, make kiss him, him kiss. Kiss him yeah. on the yeah. You right. gotta kiss your brother, yeah. and, and he'd just be like, mm-hmm. yeah. he didn't want it either. Usually, he's just like, no, like this is miserable for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. kiss her. So. I don't want her lips on me. You guys are so inspiring as a family, like, and even just the two of you, your relationship, like, you know, just in the world we live in, there's a lot of people. You know, marriages just don't yeah. seem, don't I seem do. like yours, and especially yeah. with everything you've been through. I mean. That's nice to see, you know. That you well, genuinely... I guarantee you could come back in twenty years, and <laughs> if we're not dead, he'll we'll still be together. Yeah, yeah. I ain't going nowhere. He's yeah. I met her in college, and same type of thing that was going on with our kids, just going through that part of their lives, and yeah. we wanted them to go through the same thing. And it was he a was moment. in college. I was in high school. Yes, it's a true. Different. A little bit different, but. Um, we we made it we made it through that and we know that statistically this is super hard on all the parents' relationships so we we don't avoid it we don't talk about it we 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 all come together and spend time as a family make sure that we're listening to everyone we actually really have not um argued at all really about yeah. i mean i get a you know little scared sometimes when him and Shannon start going on tyrants here and there and I'm like you guys are scaring me <laughs> you know yeah um because it's just like you said it's awkward and it feels very like not normally like you're not supposed to go call out the prosecutor or call out yeah you know, you know? so I mean I'm like ah. it's my daughter yeah. nobody tells but, me but you know um you know yeah I'm a scary cat when it comes to that kind of stuff but I mean I'll do it don't make me do it I will get ugly but um and, and I just can't. 90, yeah. 99% of the time, it's it's all positive. It's just the times where you think maybe decisions being influenced by, uh, you know, pressures outside of what's best for the case that you've got to put your foot down and say, okay, if you don't want to share what's going on here, then we'll, we'll be forced to make a statement. We'll have to do what's best for our daughter. That We really have to take that stance. Mm-hmm. There's nobody else that can do it at the same um, attention level that I think we can. Um, nothing against a prosecutor or anything, but I just don't know if they're, they just can't be committed like a parent. You know, a parent is, is mm-hmm. we're willing to do whatever we have to do, so. And maybe they are. Yeah. Maybe they are. 
I hope so. I would love to we, we talk underestimate. About we do too. We're like, well, we hope. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of us, at least in the media, underestimated the police during the time. We did. So we maybe did. it'll be the same kind of situation. Well, they we talked with them one-on-one and they, you know, you looked at them and said, please just tell me that there's going to be somebody. And they, they, stuck, they, they stepped out of their comfort zones to, to comfort Christy and the families to like, hey, we're on top of this. We got it. We're, we're, we're going to. And, and they we did. Know. That was the only thing that we, I left that day when we met with them. It was like, I believe it was December 13th. And um, I it made a them, big impact I said, on I'm you. I'm going to ask you both. You know, they said, I said, who's in charge here? And they told us. And I said, I'm going to ask you both the same question. What is your, how do you feel, zero to 100%, that this case will be solved? And I asked him, and he, he said, he looked at me and he said, 100%. And then I said, your turn. And he looked at me, and the, and the second one looked at me very intensely. I mean, the first guy did too, but that that look that I got from don't say, I, don't no, say, because I, I, I don't want to get say, nobody. I no, and I was like, and that was right around the time that they were swirling his name around, and he said, one hundred percent, this will be solved. And I was like, that's all I need to know. And I, I had some peace in my heart for about a minute. <laughs> and then and I went back to, they got nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I was like, I think they got something. I, I'm yeah. like, no, the way he, both of them, but the way he looked at me, I'm telling you. And then, but yeah, you, 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 you lose, it just, you lose hope. Well, you never, I don't know if you felt like you lost it. It's just easy to fall into the negativity when, you know, the, that's, putting your trust into someone else, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you definitely know? true. And I, I do regret, and I do wish I could see him again and hug him. I haven't been able to see him and hug him and tell him, <laughs> you know what? Thank you. I appreciate that. I do that. remember that. That helps a parent. I don't know if you well, when this is all over, me. yeah, you know, when yeah, yeah. at the end of the trial, hopefully you'll have that moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that kind of stuff happen? I think so, yeah. Is that Definitely. kind of... Yeah. We, we talked about it. I told him. I said, you guys, you guys nailed this. Get this done. Dinner, beers on me. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go and yeah, they we'll, did. He said we'll laugh. They did. We'll laugh about you know some of the struggles and some of the you know the conflicts that. And, and he goes, I, yeah. He said, he said, I can't wait till I could tell you everything. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, he did. And, and I grew up in a very competitive. It was about this tall, playing sports and everything. And I always had a coach who told me, you know, even if you thought you had the greatest game, you could get better. So I take that type of approach to uh this case you know even if we have the greatest day we get but is there more is there more like seeing the fbi there today is the type of thing that makes me feel like i don't like to see it boarded up locked up and not know that well know that i didn't see cameras filming through all the windows didn't see all now i see those things and now i can let those things go yeah yeah and hopefully they are in there finding more evidence or something new i mean I, that would be amazing i feel like You've seen that community. We're gonna get, the ideal guy to get on that jury is a farmer who doesn't even have cable TV. Yeah. So to tell him he's got to watch a 3D render, it never made me feel right. A, a farmer is going to be like, no, I want to see it. I want to touch it. I, I, no, no, you guys can show me all this computer stuff all you want, but it's not real to me. I want to look through that window. I want to hear a dog barking from inside that house. I want to, so that's why I was like, I don't know if, boarding it up this quick during the middle of the winter is the ideal thing and i think now with those guys going in there that's exactly what makes me feel comfortable that when it does go down then i don't look back and always think about what could have happened now now it's done so it's just things like that do you have any questions Lauren? um I mean, I know that we've, and, and you can answer this to Brian, but I know we've talked about, like, we still feel like there's so much more that we don't know that's going to come out whenever this trial starts. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of how you guys feel? Mm-hmm. And, and what does, you know, and, and what is, it's, mean, what it's, is that like? Are you, do you yeah, yeah, answer? no, you can just answer it. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I think it's scary. I'm scared. You don't because, want to hear something that... Well, yeah, I mean, because you can't... I mean, and like I said, my mind will go, you know. Give me a little. And um, and unfortunately, my mind will go there. And I'm, I'm scared what I will hear. I think it's going to be terrifying. 
I think it's going to be absolutely terrifying. And I, and is it mentally good? You know, obviously it's not mentally good for me at all. Are healthy? No. And I've thought about like, maybe I shouldn't go and be there. I mean, there are days that I won't be, yeah, you know, yeah. photos, I'm out. But um, I feel I have to be there for Kaylee. Yeah. I, I feel like I have to. Like she'd be like, mom, get up and get your butt in court now. Like, you know, like she went through that. Mm, at least we can be there to make sure that it. But I think hearing the details, if they come out or they're, they're I mean, the prosecution's got to paint a picture, mm. even the picture that they paint. I mean, it's probably going to be fairly accurate. I would think but for the most part, we could talk to the, we could talk to Thompson, the prosecution and say, Hey, all you have to do is look at us and just, and we can leave. There's just no way that a ton of stuff is going to come out. I think a ton. And sometimes I just lay in bed and think about that. Yeah, they're going to re retrace oh. his steps. People are going to be shocked about how uh, sophisticated this investigation was. I think uh, the caste system, what I've seen of that, yeah. is going to blow people away. The tilting of the phone, all that stuff now can be yeah. used to... Uh, give a picture that people don't realize. Um, so I think, and I think there's some brilliant people working on this case, and uh, um, they're going to lay out uh, a, a full picture of things okay. that lay out to a point where you're going to walk through this and you're going to relive it. And uh, that will, uh, I think it'll be pretty clear by the end of the case. The verdict. I think the details are going to be what led up to it or, or, you know, when he got got eyes on him or one of them, both of them, someone, how he picked that. I mean, I think it's just going to be very haunting, very just a nightmare. Yeah, just an yeah, average the person. The motive, I think, because we don't really have that yet. Yeah. So that will all be. And I think his motive, which is weird, I think his motive was he wanted to do it. He, he wanted, wanted to murder. Yeah. Well, he did want I know to be that's, a... You know, like, but why did he want to murder? Well, he wanted murder because he want. I mean, he wanted to see what it felt like because he's a weirdo. I don't know. Just well, he wanted to be a police officer, and he probably. Well, I don't think most police officers want to murder people. No, no, no. But he and wanted especially that way. It, it was I mean, part of goodness. his his fantasy was to be yeah. in that situation of control. So, but yeah, I mean, I some of the details I look forward to because it's it would be nice to put it to rest. But I don't know if I would put it to rest, but your brain ponders it. How, 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 how? How did they cross paths? How? I want answers. I want to know. You know, why can't you just tell us that? I mean, I, I get it, but I mean, it's just such a simple question, you know? And, 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 and just how he was able to do that so quickly yeah. in the house. Yeah. You know, it, it's so brutal. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, 15 minutes? 404 to 4, 20, 417 or something. And people say, oh, it's not possible, it's not possible. Yeah, it is. No. He, was on a, he was on a mission. I think they'll re he, redo he those steps. He was on a mission. He went boom, 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 straight upstairs. Yeah, and adrenaline and, you know. <laughs> and it's, both victims are right next to I each mean, other. I mean, sit for 14 minutes. Just sit. Put your clock on. And me and Olivia have done that before. And be like, just sit inside. And we're just going to sit here. And I mean, you know, we're like, how long has it been? And she'll be, she was like, seven minutes. I'm like, okay. Yeah. 11 minutes. Like, damn, that's a long time. You know, so you think it is, you know, people are like, no way, no way, no way. You know, yeah, way. You know, I, I'm, I'm not thinking anybody new will be introduced to the case in that way, like um, an accomplice or anything like that. You can't get somebody to get on that MO with you. No way. Yeah. No way. I mean, Bonnie and Clyde, okay, that was a little different, you know, but yeah, you, yeah, you're not getting, somebody's not getting on that crazy train with you. You're going to say, you're crazy. You are crazy. Yeah, that would have come out by now, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Mistrust between the two. I mean, and, and you're going to throw this person yeah. under the bus the first time, first statement you say. And I, and I worry about, I don't worry about him, but I, my mind also thinks too, that one day he's just going to say, we're backed in the corner. All of our emotions have been heard. We're done. I'm looking like a straight up fool right now because, you know, we got nothing. He can't even come up with an alibi. Let's talk about that for a minute. What happened with that? 
It was due. Yeah, it was due. Idaho it law was due. says it you have due. to give your alibi. Yeah. And it was extended. It was or, extended. It or was extended. they explained to us, or you can't use one. So that would mean he couldn't say. So right there. And then his, I was driving around. Yep, that was my white car that drove. Yep, that was me. But I didn't go in and kill those kids. Yep, that's yeah, my. You can't yep, come up with an alibi on the cam. in the courtroom. He just has to say. Don't know how my sheath got there. I mean, if, if he pled guilty and said, I'll plead guilty in exchange for a life sentence, <sighs> have you thought about that? Yeah. yeah, I don't want that because I do know I studied the criminal system and the difference between life and prison. Even if it's 20, 30 years, he's 23 hours locked up. He doesn't get to do what B, what is it, BTK? BTK killer? PTK. Or whatever. BTK. We've, we've found out that he uh, writes papers for other prisoners and gets treated really well because he's intelligent and he's able to help other prisoners get uh, preferable treatment through the legal system. Uh, we don't want that type of behavior to happen in our case where he has influence outside of this event. So that's been a hard one, though. I mean, we he could write a book, he can do things. Idaho doesn't have a law in particular that protects against that. The hard thing with this, that question, honestly, is that's where you forget, and I don't know how it's possible, but you forget that other there's three other families involved here. We're not the only ones, you know. It's not just, I'm like, this is not a one, you know, band, one crime you know? fits all. This is right, this isn't just our, our daughter, right? Some and might I know not that go through the, the trial. I know some of the other families definitely would be yes like let's go where do i sign and i understand that 100 percent, 100 percent. i understand that but you know what ultimately it's not our our call i mean they might ask us our opinion like they did on the death penalty and and we'll give it but just because you know our opinion is yay or nay doesn't mean that you know that's what we get and, and we have talked with the families to the point where we're like let's never let this get so angry or ugly that we turn on each other and Never. we're mad at each other we got to respect that we're all gonna we're all different i'm gonna families. fight crazy and you're not gonna agree with the way that i do things but my heart's in the same place that your heart's at you just have a different way of constructing your energy and that's fine I, i'm not asking you to be me and i hope that you can understand that i'm going to be a different different individual different parent than you are and uh, we can all just agree yeah. that we're going to have different takes on it. Maddie's, you know, her mom, Karen, yeah. there's certain things that she's like, I hope this isn't, you know, changing it. And we're like, no, not at all. If you want to do a certain direction or you don't want to do a certain activity. My or, love for Karen and Scott will never die. Yeah. And that's a promise I make to both of our girls. Never, ever, ever. None of this legal stuff, no matter how left or right we go or left or right she goes or they go. Yeah, I think yeah. people just grieve in different ways too. Yeah, you know? we are going to love. And I told yeah. Karen that. I yeah. said, we can't even agree on everything. How could we you know, expect to mm. us agree on everything? Because I'm you know, right. I think She's first, wrong. Because <laughs> I think at first, um, with everything, everything, the second that the girls died, it was like, what are you guys doing? We don't care. We'll do whatever you want. What are you guys, whatever you guys, you know, like, I mean, everything. We were like, we just kind of handed the torch back and forth. Mm -hmm. Whatever. We'll do whatever you guys are doing. Whatever you guys are doing, What you know. And, um, you know, and then. The, it's a year later are, now. Things so are definitely like, not complicated by any means. Yeah. With, yeah. You know. We still but, have dinners but, and things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but obviously bigger questions come up and beliefs and things like that. So, you know, things. You know, things do come up and, you know, and it's fine. It's, it's, it's fine, but I don't know. I just. We promise to have a vacation all together when this is done with. Because I, I tell her when this is done, I'll never talk to another TV station. I'll never do another. I will disappear and I will be glad that when nobody recognizes and yeah. I don't have to do it. I, I, I can deal with it here in this, but you, I already told you one of the places that I'm going and I hope to just find a place to just be a part of the community yeah. and just kind of disappear and just go fishing and hang out and be yeah. around. And, and he can go on that trip and I'm, I'm, he's going with our son and I think that's great for them, you know, and I'm, I'm super glad that he just is off my butt trying to make me go because I think that I'd have a panic attack if I would go that far away. I'd be like, oh, like, yeah. oh, like I would lose. We went to Bruce Lake and she was having a hard time. 
and that's just I get a little couple panicky hours. and it's 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 terrible. I've never been that way. I've never people that say, Oh, I have panic attacks or anxiety things. Oh my god, stop. Like get a hold of yourself. Like, my get kids a, my panic kids make it panic. Anxiety attacks. It's real. It is real. I mean I I've had a few. Is a few. Six, six Which, yep. Pass? Change. She'll just wake up and she's like, "I'm having one," and I'm like, like, like it, like oh, I, I, all three. I've had three, and I literally wake up like, <laughs> like just panic. I can't breathe. I'm like, sh- I'm literally shaking uncontrollably. I'm trying to like, but I learned like the first two were bad. He almost took me to the hospital. We were up in Priest Lake, and he was like, "Christy, like you know, you need to get a hold of yourself." Like breathing is the trick just trying to like control that breathing but and just uh, yeah just and, and then the I'm crazy like, thing it, is she doesn't have anything on her mind right. so like if i came up and i had some vivid dream then i'd be like okay i could but she's just like I, i'm like what what's going on what are you thinking she's like nothing and i'm like well clearly something's going on but <laughs> maybe you've just bottled it up and yeah it, it just out. expresses I don't, yeah I don't know. She's cuckoo. I, I, I do have some really terrible dreams. And, and that, I had a, yeah, yeah, that sucks. And it's, they're always about Kaylee. Always. Not always. You had one about Autumn this morning. Oh, that she was saying, it's cold. Let me in the house. That was so, a little creepy. That was yeah. about Autumn this morning at my back door. It's winter. I I, Wait, it's it winter. seems like it would be hard to really try to figure out how to move on with your life when the trial is you can't and how are you supposed that's to that's what i said that's you what can't. i said to him i'm like i cannot move on right now i cannot go on vacation i can don't take me too far away from my house i will i i, I mean i'm <sighs> glad that i don't work far your whole life's pending and you're hoping for a schedule you're hoping for dates Those that's dates. why our Those that's dates. why our, our our legal counsel is so like adamant on like let's get some dates he, he knows the families want their lives back they need to have dates set in court even if it gets postponed we understand that but knowing that these dates are laid out and they're not just like today was a good example it came out of nowhere and then it basically ended with we'll look at it we're not exactly sure what we're looking at do we look at it all at once or do we look at it separately it's 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 a lot of discovery right now and we're hoping discovery would be over a year later but we're not complaining that... To, yeah, the Zoom today, uh, I knew we were going to get a date, you know, a scheduling date for the this FBI stuff. But um, I was I was definitely like, December 1st, what is it? Is it December 1st or 2nd? I mean, I was literally like, oh my gosh, I just like lost it. I just was like, I just cannot believe, like, oh. And everybody was just like, Christy, it's better than yesterday. Yesterday you guys had nothing, because yesterday we got the court date. Cause so on Friday we were like, so what's next? Right. Like nothing. Mm. We hear nothing, and then all of a sudden they dropped the bomb yesterday that you know court tomorrow or something like that. And we're like, oh, oh, yay, yay. You yeah, know. That's very. And then and it's then like a today, roller coaster. So yeah. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, you're right, you're right. It is a little. I mean, we're getting there. Outside but these perspective. These months are torture, and at least for me, because I mean, I feel like I just part of it is I just torture myself with them, and I'm just like. I get that date in my head, and I'm like, just reverse, just reverse. And I just, and you know, I just try to get through the weeks. I'm like, just get through the weeks, just get through the weeks, you know? And I get active. I just, I get involved. I, I know that I can find more And I more just want to pull the covers up over my head and just be like, just leave me alone. Where are my dogs? Just. I know you mentioned that, um, that you, you guys wanted to get, like, her phone back. Is, is there anything else that, like, you guys were like, oh, my gosh, I would love to have this? We haven't even, we asked for a list of the things that they had to take. Because we know of some things, like a laptop, uh, an Apple laptop, and a couple of things. We couldn't even get them to give a list. So Of things that they had. And I don't, I mean, maybe it sounds stupid, but I don't really know why Kaylee's phone is evident. Like, what is on... So, it makes me think, what is on it? Yeah, that makes you go cuckoo. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, okay. Yeah. What is on it? Her speaker. It's kind of an unusual item not to give um, back. The I laptops. Mul- multiple laptops, not just one. All electronics, it seems like they've kept of hers. Um, so, and, and her bake records. her The amount of records on Kayla is probably... 
I think fairly to say was ha- I, more than the other the other victims. So curious where where that where I don't that's gonna know come. If we got like her like her like wallet wallet like. We got things from her room. Her room really was yes, a part of I'm it. I'm talking about like her wallet with her ID in it and her debit card. And yeah, yeah, we we have we have those items. We have her ID. And her, she had so many IDs. It's hard to. <laughs> she had a lot of college IDs, a lot of high school IDs. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I actually we all had see. a lot of IDs. I, and, and I, <laughs> I I actually haven't gone through my thing is because I'm very good about like just. Pretending like things didn't happen and like put it out of my head and pretend, pretend, pretend. And um, that's what I do with Kaylee, um, Kaylee's stuff. Um, because we brought everything home. Well, we got a bunch of stuff home and I went through like two things and I literally, two boxes. And I literally couldn't go to work for like three days. I mean, I literally was like smelling everything and just like sitting on the floor. And, and my mom and his mom were like, we're going to go just get it up in Kaylee's room, okay? So, I mean, I then I went to my room and I'm like, everybody just leave me alone and get away from me. And they they packed it up there and put it all away. And then um, I have not gone through any of it at all besides those two boxes. Um and I don't want to go through any of it. I don't know why. Um, it just is so hard to go through that stuff. And when we went down to the house or that little when we storage picked up house stuff. that they had for us to go through, that was so hard to see their rooms like set up in this house and get the rest of their things. It was Kaylee's room. Kaylee was bedroom number two. And I was like, my daughter doesn't even have a name. She's bedroom number two. So everything marked bedroom number two was Kaylee. And uh, that was that was hard. That was really hard. That was last summer. But I've only been up to Kaylee's room. I mean, it's right up there, right at the top of the stairs. I've only been up there twice. And neither time was for any amount of time. It was like in and out. Oops, oops, in and out. Once was when Olivia was here and... Um, she keeps, she's it's a fortress. She doesn't want the other girls to steal her clothes. I don't want anybody going through it, her stuff at all. I'm just like, get out of there. Why are you wearing that? That's Kaylee's. Um, that's all we have. That is it, you know. And it's just, um, it's just real. It's just so real sometimes. And it's just the worst. That somebody could do this to somebody's family. So many families. You know. But on the brighter side, when we do get those phones and we do get those laptops, we will have photos and memories that have been hidden from us. Yeah, because we'll I'm sure she has a ton of selfies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, you'll just have to, like, I feel like you'll know when the time is right for you when you want to go in there. Yeah. You know. I mean, right now, you know, I'm like, mmm. I don't... Mm. Yeah, you got to know yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'm like... My mother-in-law's been really working on it. She's here with us, and she's been really, like, working on, like, you know, getting it kind of... I'm like, I just want it to be like she left it. I wish I would have saw exactly how she left it because things have been put in there and stored in there since... Or pretty much her stuff. All boxes. So she's Tupperware. trying. She's like, I remember, you know, because she stays up there, and she was here when Kaylee passed away, and she was like, I remember. Do you want me to get it? Like I can remember, and I'm like, yes, yes, I want to see it. So she's there, and she's like, I, I want you to come up and see it, and I'm just like, I've been like, mm. she put like, the TV okay. where her TV was, and yeah, her pictures, and, I'm just like, and, I, I and it was just... kind of Maddie's room too, because there was always Maddie stuff over in a certain <laughs> corner. Just... Yeah. All the pink was in one corner and yeah, so. Yeah, she will just, and she understands though, you know, she's not trying to push, but she said, you know, it helps me actually. She goes, I wasn't like super reluctant about going in there, but it actually helps me, you know, to go in there, but it is hard too. Um, it's the, it's just like the car, seeing the car. It's a constant reminder, you know. I had a blanket. I took a blanket to work with me, and it was a it was beautiful a blanket that somebody sent to us as gifts, and it was color covered in squares of Kaylee and Maddie, all the best pictures ever. 
all the front was when they were younger and all the back was all college days. And I would fold it perfectly so then it looked like a movie strip thing and I would, I kept it on the back of my chair. And you know, I'm getting up and a hundred times a day and, and that, and it's like life side, you know, I had to take it down after about a week. I'm like, I can't, I said, I'm going to have to put you away. I said, I just can't. I love that blanket, but I'm like, I, it just is like, boom, you just turn around and her and Maddie just, you know, like life size. And I'm like, I'll get you back out. But I just, that constant, I don't need a constant reminder. I already have one, you know. That visual on top of it. Yeah. But yeah, they're, and my friends were at work. We're like, well, yeah, yeah, you know, then put it away, you know, for sure. And I'm like, I think I'm going to have to, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. No, I don't think you're crazy. I don't know. You're a mom. Yeah. It's hard. I think when the time is right for you, you'll know, like, when you want to go in a room or, you know, it's like. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope because I think Kaylee would want me to go in there mm -hmm. and sit and go through her things and smell her stinky sweatshirts and stuff. But, um, I don't know. You can't rush it. Just take your time. And if she, just always put yourself in her position if you were gone and she... That's what everybody always tells me, and I'm like, mm -hmm. that doesn't help me. So she was looking at pictures of you, and it was making her upset, and she's like, Mom, I'm going to have to put this in the closet for a day. Would you wait? I, no, we need to deal with my photo. I would be like, Kaylee. <laughs> I'm not gonna, that bad, am I? You're going to put me in the dark closet? <laughs> <laughs> well, then you know. But I love you. I mean, you've got her pictures everywhere. I don't think she's going right. To feel and the like kids are already not. like, "Mom, things yeah. are getting a little shiny around yeah, here." And yeah, I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, "No, okay." Like, how many Kayleys have you done? Yeah. I'm like, it's not. It's perfect. It's oh. perfect. So you can see there was a little bit of laughter at the end there. It's nice to see Christy and Steve smile, um, but just being in their home, you know, you can tell. This is something that they're living every day, that their entire family is living, uh, and that all the victims' families are living. Some are more private than others. Everybody grieves in different ways, but it's really just a, a difficult time. So my heart goes out to all of them, especially at the one-year mark. Um, in terms of the court case, there's no significant update right now. Uh, there's not another hearing schedule. There's a deadline for the... Uh, prosecution to turn over some of the um, investigative genetic genealogy records um, to the judge that's December 1st but beyond that you know there's a lot of everybody asks me is there a trial date when's the trial gonna be we really don't know and if you heard in the interview I mean that's something that is agonizing for the families so hopefully that'll all be sorted out soon uh, but um, thanks for listening I hope that um, hearing that full extended interview gave you a sense of what these families go through because I know a lot of us who follow the cases you know we get really into all the little tidbits and following the court process and and sometimes you lose sight of um, just how agonizing this is for the families and I think seeing that full unedited interview hopefully shows you the range of emotions that they're going through so thanks for watching I'll see you guys soon